another one. I guess that is API night because this one says low code API test automation tool. I'm starting a new sprint team at my company. And one of the goals for this quarter is to automate the API test to run on every sprint via CI CD trigger. Every sprint. Hmm, interesting. Looking to find a tool that can help with API automation since my coding skills are limited. I know a little bit of Java but my team is built with mostly manual QAs. I don't want to use Postman because we have to build a lot of integration tests between the services, sometimes almost 20 services in a test with multiple variables being passed from one service to another. Postman's integration test using collections and variables is cumbersome to manage. That's what I was, that's what I was mentioning earlier about trying to do it with Postman is a pain in the eep. Any suggestions of any tools used by you all for low code API tools? Also, I want to test REST APIs only. All right. So, I'm going to stick back to what I originally said. You know some Java, Python is so much easier than Java. I would say go with go with go with Python. And use the request library and do your value like you can, you know, you can even you can even use um like cucumber behave in Python because here here's here's why I I shy away from those low code um i shy away from those low code tools right Start the clock. because there are some customizations that i would want to do or setting some variables in certain spots and a lot of times you're at the mercy of those tools where you cannot do certain things. And the way that my mind works is I get to a roadblock and I say, okay, there goes the problem solving part, right? I get to a roadblock and I say, okay, what do I need to do to overcome this obstacle, this roadblock? So, okay, for instance, you need to wait until something is available. So let's, let's make it practical. Let's make it practical. You send you send an API request to create a user, and it takes about one minute for the user to be created in the system. For some reason, it takes one minute. You have the user ID, but for the user to be provisioned, it has to become a status of active. So now, you would say, okay, I am going to send a request to get the user status. And every time that I, I send the request, it says that the user is pending. So I send, I send the, so I'm trying every five seconds for up to a minute. As soon as the status says active, then I can go to the next step. A lot of times it's, a, it's, it's hard to do that inside of inside of these um, low code tools because of their um, they're limited because the, the the reason they're limited is because it's supposed to be easy to use but with ease comes less customization so I like to write my own code and to, to do what I have to do. So for instance, if I'm using, if I'm using behave in Gherkins and stuff, I can say, okay, um, we have, you have a step. I wait for the user status to become active and inside of the, the step definition where I'm writing the code, I can say, okay, every five seconds, I want to send this request to the user endpoint and it's going to look for the field or the key for status to see what it is. And if it's not active yet, then you wait another five seconds and then you send the request again and you send it over and over and over 
until it does become active. And now we move on to our next step. So the same way for me, the same exact way I'd be automating a website, I'm going to be automating the API. So because you, you say that you have, you say that you have, um, where do you say it? It says, um, sometimes almost 20 services in a test with multiple variables being passed from one service to another. So you can set that variable and you say, okay, now after I, after I make this request at this endpoint, I have to go to this next endpoint and I, and you can define your endpoints and says, and this is the request body for it. And you send that request, you go to, you just keep going down like the same way, the same exact way. Like when you're automating a website, you're saying, go to the homepage, click on the login button, enter the username and password, uh, click on, uh, click on login, go to, go to the, I don't know, my account page, click on order history. The same way you're going through that whole process is the same exact way that you'd be automating an API. Instead of, instead of you're clicking on particular buttons, you're saying, send this request, validate this response, extract these variables from the response and store them as a variable. And you say, okay, now send this request passing these particular variables. That's the concept of API testing. And that's why, to me, a basic API test in Python is the most efficient low-code way because I can do if statements. If this happens, then do this. If this happens, then do that. I can put breaks. I can do loops. And the, and the API testing library is super, super simple with um, with. Python. And here's something that I, I've never been afraid to do. When I was working with manual testers and they were at lower level, I said, okay, cool. Well, I'll teach you how to run these automated tests. And I would highly encourage you to learn automation yourself to make yourself more valuable. Some did it, some didn't, some wanted to stay exactly as they were, but I'll tell you this. Though when I was working with with um, QA with QA testers and engineers and analysts in South America, they took they embraced the opportunity and the knowledge that I was sharing with them to be able to to execute these tests to be able to write these tests and things like that. So for low code API test automation, I I would scratch that I would scratch that idea right. Get rid of the idea for low code API tests. Learn Python. You already know Java, so it should be easy for you to learn Python. Take a Udemy course. And start building out the infrastructure. You can, you can, use, your, you can, you can use your manual testers, your manual QA, to do some, some work for you, where it, whether, it's, whether it's setting up the, setting up the API calls, whether it's... Um, or, or the request bodies, finding the endpoints, you know, documentation. And then, you know, make it work, make it work. I, I would not recommend going to low code because it is going to, it's going to slow you down. It's going to cause limitations and stuff like that. All right. All right. If you enjoyed the fascinating information shared in this video and you want more, be sure to hit the subscribe button to Tech Coach Ralph to be notified for new videos.